Good day guys and welcome back to another Path of Exile video. This video will be split into three sections. The first one will be for the new players and also players who are new to the 3.1 mechanics. The second section will be why the majority of you are here for. So that will be about what map to shape, how to use section as you can see right here and section blocking of course. And the third section will be about the new mechanic introduced in 3.1 that is the Elder and Shepherd influence as you can see over here. The timestamp will be in the video description below so feel free to skip ahead if you are not interested in the first section. Okay, if you're still here, I assume you are either a new player or are in interested in how the new atlas mechanic works. To start with, you will start at the four corners on your atlas with the tier 1 maps and you find these during act 6, 7, 8, 9 something like that um, along the way and after you complete Act 10 you'll be able to do this map from Xana and also yeah as a side note make sure you have Xana in your hideout because she's re really convenient as you can buy missing maps from her early on and it's it's quicker than to buy it from other players and every just make sure you do your daily mission from her and the maps will get updated every day that way and every time she level ups as well Okay, so the next part is how to get the Shepherd Ox. When you go from tier 1 to tier 5, everything will be normal, just pro progress as how you normally are. When you get to tier 6 and above, you get to maps that looks like this, it has that background. Um, and when you complete one of these, you will drop a memory fragment. Pick it up and bring it to Xana, she will give you a tier 1 Shepherd Ox for that. You will be able to shape one of this tier 1 over here, as you can see over here, H chip um, Beach, in this case. And after you've done that, the elder will start to appear, and the elder looks like this. And you will be able to get the next tier shepherd ops from a map that's been influenced by the elder. Just make sure that you do it in order because it goes in quest order. So say for example, if you do a tier six and drop drop you a um, and drop you a tier one shepherd off, if you don't do a tier seven, and you jump to a tier 8 to do um, another one, it will still drop you tier 2 because it goes in quest order. So make sure you do it in order to be able to get what you wanted. Okay, the second section, and I assume this is what the majority of you are here for. I'll jump straight into it. You want to do everything that is complete um, older maps and make sure you get the bonus as well from tier 1 to tier 8. Don't do any tier 9 yet because Bolt right now goes for a lot it goes for like 4c something ridiculous before i know about this i already completed all the tier 9 and it costs a lot for me to unshape or to uncomplete all of them so that's why I'm, I'm having my tier 9 completed over that like that but if you haven't started on your atlas yet just make sure you have your vault as the only completed tier 9 on the map um and just you know keep an eye on the market and if the value for vault map starts to go down, then just feel free to complete the rest of the tier 9 maps. Okay, next to the tier 10 map, when you do your tier 10 to get the shepherd orbs, just make sure you uncomplete it. And the recipe to uncomplete it is quite, it's quite expensive unfortunately, so, but you, you just gotta do it. And it is 3 of the sections of that color, so for example you do your tier 10, that will be a 3 yellow section and all and each of them go for like 5 C's at the moment which is quite expensive and an orb of scouring if you sell to the vendor, you get um, a cartographer seal like this one and if it is a yellow one, it will give you yellow and the red one um, accordingly so if you get that one, once you get that what you do, just right click on it and then you click on the map that you just completed and it will become uncompleted like this one and this is really important because um, for the Atlas mechanic you only drop maps that are unlocked on your map so maps that look like this this is not unlocked yeah or maps that are adjacent to the map that you are currently running it's not map that are currently to maps that you unlocked I saw that a lot of people are confused about this so just make sure that I put it out there and only drop maps that are adjacent to maps that you are running or maps that you have completed. So in this case, as you can see, if I type tier 10, the only tier 10 I have at the moment is channel. All the other tier 10 are uncompleted, except for um, the unique map over there, which doesn't really matter because it rarely drops anyway. So for example, 
if you do a tier 9 temple right here, you'll have 50% chance of dropping a channel map and the other 50% will be for grip map and that's the way the atlas work. With that out of the way, when you uncomplete your tier 10 over here, the only tier 10 left to drop on your atlas is the channel because around it there's no other tier 11 maps. So that's the only map that you can drop and that's how you start to build up your atlas that way. You don't have to shape the same map as I do over here, you can just shape any other tier 5 maps whatever suit your playstyle and whatever map that you feel like playing just shape it and the other thing I should mention is when you shape your tier 10 just don't do what I did here which is have a 2 tier 11 because they will compete with your tier 10 drop chance so what happened on the atlas is if a map drops and you have no maps unlocked for that tier and you're not running a map that is adjacent to that map that that map will get rolled out to the, a lower tier on your atlas. So for example, you do a channel over here, which is a tier 10, and you queue a rare mob, you get a tier 11 map, but if you have no tier 11 unlocked on your atlas, what it will do is it will roll down to a tier 10 and you'll get a channel instead. However, in this case, because I unlocked two tier 11, they will stay as tier 11, either Spider Forest or Shep Atoll. Um, so don't do what I did there, just start to build up a pool of tier 10 map first. So say for example 20, 25 then will be a good starting point and then you can think about shipping tier 11 and completing tier 11 because it yields more profit that way. Um, the tier 11 maps that you should be completing at the moment as of this video is Spider Forest. I was lucky because the elder influenced the spider forest and it dropped me the shepherd orb which I need for a tall over here. So I didn't have to uncomplete any tier 11 map. Um, and the reason why I said I was lucky is because tier 11 spider forest goes for the most right now, I think 5 saves or something like that. You can check it out on PoE Ninja, it's a good website which um, tell you the price of maps and everything in general so you can keep an eye on it and which one's beneficial for you to run um, okay and um, so going back to the shaping tier 11 I shaped a tall over here but you shouldn't do that because this one right now goes for a lot more go for just one C more than the shape at all so shape at all is 4C each um, spider forest go for around 5 C's and what you notice is that you will get a lot of shape at all because it's right next to channel. I I don't know, the technically it shouldn't be that way, but for some reason I just get a lot of shape at all. I, I get like um, 1 out of 10 for spider forest, the, the rest of them is shape at all. And I don't feel like unshaping it at the moment because it's quite expensive as well. The next part will be about section blocking and sequencing your maps. Um, which is really essential to sustaining the map pool that you're running. Let's say for example you decide to shape your channel map like what I did over here, what you want to do is to shape to section blocking this map and all the one over here. Because if you put sorry, if you put one of those guys on the map you will see that the circle right here this map, that one, those four, one, two, three, four, those four are the ones that are influencing the channel map that we're running. Because if you look at the circle, it's, it's quite hard to see, but just barely touch it, and that's how you know whether it's influencing the map that you want or not. So that, 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 that are the four that we will be putting our section on. So that means all the maps around it, so that one and the five over here will be the one that we want to put our mods that we don't want to run on. Um, so for example, if you look at the one over here, it will give you 20% attack speed, cast speed and movement speed. What you want on your sections is more monster. The more monster the better because more monster means there's a high chance for you to drop your maps which, is, which makes it easier for you to sustain your map pool. Um, so you can see right here what I have in this one is additional coal 
monster. This one is poisonous monsters, um, mirror, and monster that converted. So basically, more monster. Um, and all the one I have over here is something like that. Rogue as out, just another one. I don't really care about it. Um, onslaught, that's terrible. Um, just an, an an addition to invasion boss. I don't really like invasion boss to start with, so that's why I put it over there. And this one doesn't touch anything else, so that's why there's nothing on it. And the reason why your section blocking is because a map that's been influenced by those two, for example, this map right here, been influenced by that one, that one, and that one, cannot roll the same mode as those three. So effectively, you've just eliminated those three by section blocking them, and that makes more efficient for you to section these one because you don't have to keep rolling over the mod over and over again wasting your currency you know? oh and the other thing is when you first start running these map it's recommended that you um, choose them to 20% and arc them to something you can run and also you should have some of these spare on in your inventory so sacrifice at dusk noon and dawn I think um, don't use midnight because midnight is quite expensive so you can sell it for like 3c at the moment so don't use it but the rest of them is really cheap it's like it goes for like one hour or something so when you first start doing your map what you want to do is put your map in there and you fill up the rest of them with those sacrifice fragments and what it does is it will add five percent quantity to your map um, so you can see right here the quant item quantity 87 percent so if you add another 15 percent it go up to whatever percentage that will be and to make it easier for uh, just a tiny bit easier for you to sustain your map pool um, okay so that should conclude the second section and now we'll go on to the third section which is the new mechanic that was introduced in 3.1 elder and shepherd so um, the elder influence is this section that you can see right here and it's really interesting because a elder or a shepherd influence map give you a just a tiny bit more mobs like probably five or six more rare mobs but they you can see quite a lot of difference running them um, and it's, it's quite fun and you do get those um, and you do get those shepherd and elder items as well which sometimes can be quite good and can be sold for a lot of money so what I did here was I manipulate the elder influence so that it moves to the left side of my atlas and the way I did that is to basically you can look if you look at the atlas right now if you look at my atlas right now you see that maps that is next to the elder influence these one um, that looks like that and if you do this map what happens is the elder will take over that map and it will extend then that way if you keep doing maps going that way so we'll go that way for example you do map up here like the those next to it it will expand this way and the same goes for and the same goes for um, the other way around so if you decide to do one of the map in here the shepherd will be getting that map so your elder will be less um, influential okay so what I did was to do all the maps that so my elder was like my, my elder was the the worst one ever. This when I was in T when, when I was in white map, it was in yellow map. When it was in yellow map, it was in red map. But luckily, it decided to move towards this way. So what I did then was I started to complete all the maps that was just at the edge like this one. So I just started to do all of them and make sure that it's just nice and round around my um, map, which is the one I want to run right here. For example, the channel. So you can just keep doing them and just make sure the elder is around this area and once you start to get around 10 or 12 um, elders influence map next to each other what it will do is it will spawn the guardians um, so as you can see right here that the map started to change a little bit so this one one two three four those four guys and once you get those four guys and five guys occupied by the elder obviously yeah sorry um, and once you get this the elder will stay there and it will not move anywhere and that's how you will be able to anchor down your elder influence um, and this is really good for when you're running your map because what happened is as you can see this one right um, this shape channel that I have right here is influenced by elder if I do it 
Um, now, if I completed the map and killed the boss, what happens is the Elder will take over um, the Shepherd, and this one becomes a Elder influence map, and the Shepherd moves back to like one of those maps. If I do that one again, then the Elder will move back here, and then the Shepherd will instead take over this place, and we're back to where we are right now. And that means you effectively just keep doing Elder and Shepherd, Elder and Shepherd, just back and forth, back and forth, and you get to do it all the time. Um, which is really, really good because you get a lot more monsters that way. Mm. Oh, um, almost forget this. You can do tier 13 and above and complete all of them if that's what you wish to do um, to increase your Atlas completion, completion bonus over here. You can do all of them. If you really want to get tier 12 from your um, channel map over here, you can select one. <coughs> Sorry. You can select one with a high value at the moment. Uh, um, at this moment, I'm checking it on the internet right now, and Race Court seems to be a good tier 12 map, um, and you can do that. And then you can complete all the tier 13 to 16 on the Atlas just for the Atlas completion. Because when you do it tier 10, it will never drop anything above tier 12. So tier 12 is the maximum you can get. Um, so feel free to complete the rest of them if you want to, because it will make it easier for you to get an higher tier map if that's what you like. Um, I think 90 and above for me for like this is more than comfortable for me. And that's it. <laughs> Nothing else. Cheers. Bye.